Hi, my name is Sean Greiner, and I'm going to show you my way of doing pixel art instead of Blender. Uh, here I'm just starting with your default scene, and by the end of this, we're actually going to have a pixel art version of Suzanne, also known as the monkey head. Um, so right now, just our normal scene. We've got a just a cube, pretty much your, your normal stuff. So we're going to start by getting rid of that cube. Just hit X and then uh, Enter to get rid of it. And I'm hitting Shift A to add a mesh, and I'm just going to pick monkey. So that's Suzanne. We can just scale her up, select scale by hitting S, and then uh, you can actually hit a number in the uh, numpad. And let's just scale her up by four. There we go. That's pretty good. I'm going to rotate her now. I'm going to rotate her by 45 degrees Oops. on the Z axis by tapping R, 45, and then Z. There we go. Pretty good place to start. Uh, she's kind of blocky. So let's first of all uh, go over here to the modifiers. We'll add a modifier and we'll just give her a subdivision. There we go, already looking better. And then we can hit spacebar on her and shade smooth. And you can see that one was already selected because I use that one a lot. All right, now we're actually ready to put on a pixel art um, material on her. So real quick, let's pull this up. Oops. Get her in the corner and then pull up. Oh, come on. There we go. All right. So we can change this to the node editor, which we'll be using here in a minute. So here, go to the material tab and then add a new material, which I'm going to call Game Boy. Uh, you can do any palette you want, but I'm going to be doing Game Boy colors uh, just because I think it's easy to work with and you get a neat result. So now that you have this, you want to come back down here to our uh, node editor and check Use Nodes. Uh, you'll see that this is just black. That's because we need to pick a, a uh, material first to be linked to this. And we can just select Game Boy. And then there you go. We've got our normal thing. And now before actually proceeding, we're going to go up here to the uh, 3D view. We're going to come here and we're going to select Material for our viewport shading. And now you can see already that we get our light source in action and any changes that we make down here will happen live up here. So to actually kind of force Game Boy colors on here, one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift A and then I'm going to add a converter called a color ramp. And we're just gonna drop that in to the factor of the ramp, it gives us the color out to our output. You can see if I change this, it's gonna change how this is displayed up above. And this is also how it'll be rendered, obviously. So let's go and plug in our Game Boy colors. Uh, I'm just using this list off of Color Lovers. I know it's actually not a real palette because it's got blue in it and a bunch of other uh, tones that the Game Boy actually could not make, but it looks nice. So that's my main reason of doing it. So as I plug these in, you're going to notice something. But this doesn't look like a Game Boy image yet. And that's because we're going to have nice, even smoothing between each of these colors, which admittedly a Game Boy can't do. I mean, it has a color palette of four, so you really can't have gradients. Now you can do dithering, um, but that is something that I might expand on later. For right now, let's just try to get to just evenly uh, colored Game Boy style graphics. So you're going to have these different colors show up. You can use whatever color you'd like. Um, but what is important is that to get rid of these uh, nice color changes, we actually kind of want to get rid of those. So if we go down here where it says linear, we can change that to constant. You're going to see that it snaps. It snaps these to the like hard edges that each color occupies. And we kind of want to space these out so they're more or less even. Uh, I guess that's more of like a personal preference. You can lean towards one color if you'd like to, but I tend to keep them fairly even. Um, the next thing we need to do is move our light source around and actually have it illuminate the scene. Uh, just hitting zero so that way it can go through the camera. Uh, now I'm selecting the camera and then hitting Shift F. And that's what's actually going to let me fly the camera around. And you can just uh, fly around using WASD 
mouse is to look. Uh, Q makes you go down, and E makes you go up. So that's a pretty quick way to like reorient cameras to get what you want. Oh, another important thing I forgot while I'm thinking about the camera. We need to go up here to our uh, our render tab. And then we need to change a couple things. This needs to be a 100%, but these two values here need to be about 256 and 256. So what we're gonna need to do is this is 256 by 256. We're gonna actually need to orient our camera just a little bit more. There's a lot of dead space around it. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go back up to the light. I'm gonna change the distance. So this is actually throwing light. Uh, I find that about 120 looks pretty good. This is nice by, by doing this as a material is we can directly see changes that our light makes and everything right to the scene. So, oh, the other thing I forgot, anti-aliasing is on. We'll need to turn that off. That'll actually give us a nice blocky look. As you can see here, if I rotate Suzanne around a little bit, you can see that we have these nice hard like blocky edges like you'd expect from pixel art. Um, let me move the camera just a little bit more. There we go. Um, we can also drop the resolution. And we can get a more pixelated look by doing that. Uh, in reverse, you can go up higher. And you'll get a less blocky look. Um, but I usually tend to stay around 256. Because it's just a mix of both. It's, it's pixelated enough that it looks like game art. But it also is enough that you can actually tell what's going on. So that's my quick rundown on how to do a pixel art shader in... Uh, Blender and how to set up the rendering and everything to do what you need to do. Thanks.